Hello, everyone. This is Becky speaking here. So over the past week, I've been pretty busy finishing up my thesis proposal for my master's studies. So right now I'm in my second year of art education master's studies and I'm doing a thesis project. So first of all, I need to finish a thesis proposal for my supervisor to approve. And I just submitted it this Monday and I'm waiting for a response from my supervisor and now I can relax a bit before moving on to the huge thesis project. So today I'm sharing with you how I compose an art journal spread in this video. And here it comes. So this is my current art journal and I made it with Canson XL 140 pound watercolor paper. I just use white yarn to sew all the pages together. And today I'm gonna finish this spread by filling the white spaces with a new harvest of cucumber and tomato from my garden. I'm starting to draw a little bit of the body of the tomato first and then I'm starting to draw the vein because it's on top. And the stem and then finishing the rest of the body in relation to the stem and adding some wrinkles on top. And then I'm starting to draw the cucumber in relationship to the size and placement of the tomato. It's quite big in relationship. And now I'm adding some surface textures for the cucumber, the wrinkles, and the spikes. Quite a lot of detail on here. So I wet the surface first before putting paint on. First layer for the tomato is basically orange. So watch out for the highlight spots. Don't paint, don't paint them in. And then I'm, I'm wetting the cucumber and then adding the first layer with red and green and some yellow ochre mix. And for the second layer of the tomato, I'm using a stronger um, orange and red mix and less water. So the color is stronger and more vibrant. And for the second layer of the cucumber, I use a mix of viridian green and lemon yellow. So for your cucumber, you don't have to follow exactly the same recipe as mine because how you look at the cucumber is quite different from my experience. So every person looks like the same thing in a different way. So your experience looking at the cucumber it's going to be completely different compared to mine. And I'm making a few video clips for Instagram. So I have an Instagram account that I post every day. Now I'm working on the third layer for my tomato. So basically, I added more red into the orange mix. And now painting the stem with green. So we can make a green stronger by adding um, more burnt sienna or blue into it. Now I'm painting the stem for the tomato. I'm adding up some shade for the tomato's body by mixing a little bit of green into the red orange mixture.
And now I'm adding some shade for the cucumber too. By mixing ultramarine blue into viridian green. And now I'm adding the shadows. So I mix the shadow co um, the color by using ultramarine blue, viridian green, and some purple. The shadows are so powerful, they make your objects pop from the page. Just doing some final polish here. Adding a stronger shadow, especially around the edge of the objects. And writing a note for myself is my art journal. Now I want to sketch this smoky view outside my studio window. So over the past week, the weather in Vancouver is really bad because of smoke drifted northward from the forest fires in the United States. And air quality in Vancouver became number one worst in the world. And every day when I open the door and windows, I can smell burned wood. So I'm making a really easy sketch here by just sketching the window frames and a couple pictures by the window sills. And I'm going to paint the view outside directly with my watercolors because it's very blurry, it's very smoky, grayish. I'm wetting the areas first with water. And then I'm adding a very light yellow ochre and yellow for the first layer. I'm really kind of painting in an abstract way. I'm trying to paint what I see instead of what my brain tells me what it is. So outside the view is almost like an abstract picture. The trees and branches and leaves are kind of like merging together. Everything looks so blurry. Now I'm trying to add the grayish forms of the houses in the distance. Some more colors for the trees, leaves. And adding some branches for the trees right outside just to give a little bit more definition. Now I'm painting the wall of my studio. It's kind of like a skin color. And now I'm just adding the shade for the window sills. It's pretty straightforward, so just kind of using a shade color with a mix of ultramarine blue and purple. And I'm just gonna fast forward because this part is quite straightforward. Just painting in my pictures by the windowsill, those little images. So now I want to add some accentuation for the leaves right outside the window that is closer to me. It's more clear and stronger. I'm trying to create a sense of depth. So when you're painting, it's good to make the objects in front of you that's really close to you um, stronger with more definition and details to create a sense of depth.
and writing about the weather. So as you can see, the view outside is really smoky. It should be a sunny day. So I'll be using my Unipin 0.5 fine liner to sketch my corn that I'm gonna eat for my afternoon snack. So as usual, I'm gonna start with the uh, overall outline of the corn. And then start filling in the rows of kernels. So I'm not stressing about getting every single kernel accurately in the right place. I'm trying to capture the pattern as, as best as I can. So when you're sketching something like this, really complex, so just relax. You don't have to be perfect. I think the most important thing is just to observe the pattern. What does it really look like? It's very natural. So um, every single kernel looks a bit different. They're not all the same. And they're kind of squishing against each other. And the kernels along the two sides looks smaller than the ones in the middle. Okay, that's it. And I'm just gonna get, add a little bit of texture for the very bottom of the corn and write a note as my afternoon snack for today. Okay, so now I'm ready to paint with my Monyo watercolors and my Sakura water brush. Some wetting the area first and adding some lemon yellow very lightly, very watery. Because corn, it doesn't have a very strong color. And the second layer, I'm adding a bit stronger lemon yellow, mixing with a tiny bit of orange. Okay, so the corn kernels are really interesting. So some of them are more um, orange yellow than others. Some are lighter, almost white. So now I'm adding some shade in between each row for the ridges so it looks more three-dimensional. Now it's time for the shadows. So again, I wet the area first and first time as a very watery shadow color and then around the edge is darker okay now i'm gonna sketch some wild apples my mom got from a friend okay so i'm gonna start drawing the one on the front apples are uh, pretty straightforward to do there's not a lot of um, complex structures and I'm going to do the second one behind the first one. And part of it is off the page. It's very interesting. So when you're sketching, you don't have to make everything fit on the page. And then here's the third apple. Okay, the dent. And then now I'm switching to my 0 0.1 fine liner to add some surface textures to accentuate the curve of the apple's body. OK, 
Okay, so I'm ready to paint again. So wetting the areas. And then here is the first layer. It's a mix of yellow ochre and light green. So the wild apple surface is not very shiny compared to the ones you bought from supermarkets. And then I'm adding a tiny bit of um, pink or magenta. And then letting it to dry a little bit before moving on to another layer otherwise it could get really muddy now the paint is dried a bit and i'm adding another layer by mixing viridian green and a little bit burnt sienna and some yellow ochre this is a very special color special kind of green So again, you don't have to cover every single space you did on the first layer. And using brush strokes that follows the direction of the marks on the apple. So you're suggesting the three-dimensional form of the apple better by using the brush strokes. Now I'm adding some more magenta, stronger magenta. So when painting a surface like this with two complementary colors, so red and green is complementary, so we have to be really careful um, not to over blend them because two complementary colors come together, they can become really muddy and it's hard to separate them. Now I'm adding the shadow for the dent. And then adding some shadow for each apple on the sides. And the shadows for each apple on the very bottom. So again, I mix my shadow color with ultramarine, blue, green, and purple. Now I'm adding a frame with blue paint just to hold the three apples together as a group better. And writing a note. So now I have a tiny space on the upper corner. So I decided to do a sketch of the sky outside the kitchen window. Now I'm tracing the shape of each tree. This is a maple tree and it's turning red. It's really interesting to do to trace the outline of a tree. And another smaller tree behind. It's very abstract. Okay, now I'm ready to do the painting very quickly. Again, wet the sky area first. The smoky sky is really uh, yellowish. So yellow ochre. And then I'm adding some ultramarine blue on top. So the colors you see in this video is not very accurate because the sky is really um, yellowish, very unusual. And the video is looking yellowish too. Now I'm painting the tree with viridian green and now I'm adding dashes of red on the tip of some branches.
And now after waiting for a couple minutes for the first layer of the tree to dry, I'm adding a second layer, which is stronger. Verdin green and some burnt sienna mixed together. And adding some stronger magenta red here and there. For the shade of red leaves, I'm using magenta mixed with some purple or blue. So you can write less or more depending on how much you want to write. And here is my finished sketchbook spread. Thank you for watching.